Last main story today. What's that? Uncle Joe. What did he do? Poor, poor Uncle Joe. What happened? He he did some shit that really caused his mental capacity into question. <laughs> and and I know the man makes he's he's old. We've talked about it before. He makes little fuck ups when he's speaking. He's done that for fifty years. He's done that since he was in his twenties. I'm not too worried about that. Right. I can kind of look past a lot of it. Can't really look past this one. This one's bad. So It's that bad? It's pretty bad. <laughs> During his remarks mm -hmm. at the White House Conference on Hunger, Nutrition, and Health on Wednesday, Biden appeared to search for the late Representative Jackie Walorski, Republican from Indiana, who died in a car accident last month, almost two months ago at this point. So Jackie Walorski, her and like two or three of her AIDS died in a car accident about two months ago. And at this speech that Biden was giving, he was thanking the different senators and Congress people that kind of helped make it happen, turned made it made it into a reality. Um, he was listing off their names. Thank you to Senator Braun. And thank you to Senator so and so, whatever. And then he was like, Jackie, where's Jackie? Is she here? She died almost two months ago. I got a question. And it, okay. Joe, have you lost your mind? That's the question that a lot of people <laughs> have right now. So I need to make sure that our audio is set up right. Because I'm going to play the video. Okay, I got you. Um, let me, so you, you listen in your headphones. Because if it's coming through your headphones, then I know that it's good. Where is my shit here? Oh, gosh. All right, I'm gonna put the camera on you. I gotta go actually over to the computer to set this up. Okay. Yeah, um, we were talking about this last episode as far as like the age of, you know, for presidents. And I think I said no, as long as he's, you know, capable. But it's not looking good for me now. It's not looking good for Joe. Um, for him to say this in in front of a, an audience, you know. What? Can you hear it again? Do it again? Oh, yeah, I got that. Okay. So that should work. Yes. Um, man, that's that's ridiculous. I hate that for Joe because I know he's trying to do the best he can. But if you are not mentally there, and we always see this in um, older people as far as like them losing their memory and train of thought. And as the president right now, you cannot lose any memory, any train of thought, any nothing, especially with with the things that are going on in our current state. And for someone to pass and then and then you are forgetting that they died like not too long ago in a very high position and you're giving credit to them and you're forgetting that they passed away. That's. Yeah, Joe, it ain't looking good. And I voted for you. It ain't Try to find looking good. I may just have to go to the uh, news article that I have linked here. Okay. Um, it's Fox News, so take it with a grain of salt. But this video did happen. Like we've 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 watched it. So let me bring this up, and then I'm gonna have to be quick to pause it. Can you mute us, the the, the, the computer? Uh, I can. Yeah, mute, mute the computer. I don't want it to start playing before I have it up. Okay. So, let's see here. All right. So, go ahead and un unmute the computer. All right. Make sure it's a good volume. Here we go. Make, can I you hear it? I want to thank all of you here, for including bipartisan elected officials like... Representative Governor, Senator Braun, Senator Booker, Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. To help make this a reality. And thanks to Senator Stabenow, Representative DeLauro for their leadership. And I'll go ahead and stop it there. So, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> the cringiness. I can, I, can, I can just feel the people in the crowd just like... Here's the thing. I... I can look past a lot of his little, you know, 
of speaking fuck ups because mm-hmm. he's made them his entire career. Right. He's always done this kind of stuff. This is this is bad. This one's this one's up there. It's not a good look, Joe. It's either one or two things. Okay. And the second thing just popped in my mind. Like he's either getting older and can't remember. Okay. Or he didn't know and doesn't care to know. No, he knew. He knew. Um, so several Republican lawmakers spoke out with their concerns because, you know, they don't like Joe Biden anyway. So anytime he does something that, you know, right. gives them some ammunition, they're going to take their shot. Uh, they voiced their concerns on the president's mental state. Senator Ted Cruz from Texas. Mm. He said, Joe Biden's diminished capacity is so blatantly obvious that even the White House press corps couldn't hide their concern. Uh, Another Texas Republican representative, Ronnie Jackson, who served as physician to the president for both Barack Obama and Donald Trump, he, and I don't think this is the first time he's done this, he called for Biden to take a cognitive test. And then Representative Greg Murphy, Republican from North Carolina, he is a practicing surgeon and the GOP Doctors Caucus vice chairman, said these kinds of senseless gaffes have become par for the course for this president. And he blasted the White House for their cover-up of the gaffe. A lot of Republicans are taking their shots now because of this. And, uh, I yeah, I'm taking, get, taking my shot, too. Right. I think you should take a cognitive I think you should take a cognitive test. Kind of like what you talked about just a second ago. It makes me think about the mailbag question we had on the last episode. Should there be a cutoff at 75 years for people in Congress and the president and, you know, people in office? Yeah, I think there should be. I um, said it then. I think there should be. But even if you don't think that there should be a cutoff at a certain age, I think there should at, at bare minimum be some sort of cognitive test at a certain age. Because right right now, this is not looking good. Like, <laughs> th- that kind of just, like, killed the trust you have in, in him. Because, like, when... Stuff hit the fan, and, and well, now, his brain can't compute like it should, as a president <clears throat> should. Then, well, I've you know I've heard a lot of, I say a lot, I've heard some Democrats kind of come to his defense, but a lot of what I'm seeing is not defending what he did, but comparing it to something that Trump did. No, I don't do saying, that. Yeah, have some have some perspective because you know trump did this well no Mm-mm. don't do that don't do that shit Mm-mm. trump's not the president and that's crazy and to me that's like you have a fire over here i know we have a fire over here but hey it's a fire here too like it mm-hmm. happened before no it still burns yeah you know what i'm saying like when my second child is born and they make a mess and then my first child james he makes a mess. And then we try, start to get him in trouble. And he's like, but he did it. No. It You're still getting an ass whooping. Doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't mm-hmm. make it right at all. Um, the one that comes to mind the most, and it's just because it's the one I've saw most recently, is uh, you ever watch Real Time with Bill Maher? Okay. So Bill Maher's a Democrat. Mm-hmm. I love watching Bill Maher. He's funny. I think for most things, at least for me, most things that he says on that show I'm kind of on board with, I can, or at the very least, I can see the reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. Okay. During his, at the beginning of every episode, he does this little monologue, which is kind of like a, a little comedy skit before Mm -hmm. he brings on his guests and everything, which it's a comedy skit. Take it with a grain of salt anyway. You know, don't get upset at anything he says, because he's, this is the part of the show where he's trying to get a laugh. Right. Right. But one of the things he said, and I'm not saying that, again, this is. This was some a comedy monologue, so he may not actually believe this. He might have just been trying to get a laugh, which is fine. But one of the things he said, and it kind of reflects a lot of the things I've heard from some Democrats, is, yeah, you know, he had a slip up and he forgot that Representative Walorski had died. But the last guy forgot that we live in a democracy. <laughs> funny. <laughs> I will admit it. It's funny. <laughs> but... There are a lot of people doing that kind of stuff, making comparisons to Trump, saying, well, Trump did this, so, you know, have some perspective. Why do you, why are we making a big deal out of this thing that Biden did when Trump did all this? Well, because Biden's the president right now. 
And we can't ignore it because Trump is a, was a piece of shit. As a fellow Democrat, I will say I'm not a fan of Trump, but I will not use Trump as a bullet sponge because of the mess ups of other people that I am in favor for. So therefore, I guess I got to get another one. <laughs> God bless you. Um, but I'm, I'm not, not going to need his blessing. I'm going to need his mercy. <laughs> It's stupid. <laughs> but, uh, man, that's, man. Like I said, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Trump. I don't really like him. But I'm not finna just highlight Trump's mess up because of, to cover up Biden, man. That's, that's wrong and that's pretty immature. It's pretty immature to say the least. But, um, man, that's, damn, Biden. Damn, man, I hate. It's almost like it's worse when it's cold. <laughs> I'm gonna wait. You gonna wait? <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's like, mm-mm. man, I hate that for him. Um. So, obviously, uh, what was her name? Corrine Jean Pierre, mm-hmm. the black uh, press secretary. We've talked about her on the show before. Um, she. Obviously, it's her job to kind of, like you said, bullet sponge. She's the bullet sponge because she's the one that's got to sit there and answer for this kind of stuff. So so people at the press conference, the White House press briefing or whatever, they were asking her questions about it. Um, and uh, she played off the moment as nothing more than Walorski being top of Joe Biden's mind, saying that uh, there will be a bill signing in her honor this coming Friday, which yesterday – he signed, I don't know what the bill was, but he signed a bill in her honor. Uh, she said, so of course she was on his mind. She was top of mind for the president. There's what the fuck was that? My phone. Oh. There's uh, that's not an excuse to me. And if it is, it's no. a shitty excuse. Because if someone dies and that person becomes top of mind for you, that part I get. You know? They've passed away. You know you're going to be, you know, the next day signing a bill to commemorate them and to remember them. You don't just forget that they're gone and start looking for them in the crowd unless something's not right up here. And There's some loose wires or some short circuits up here. And honestly, it's like I would hate to be anybody that's around him because you have to answer for these questions. Yep. And so, let's just say, uh, example, what she did. Everything she answered, bad answers. Very bad answers. <laughs> bad answers. So, therefore, not only is Biden looking at, like, what are you doing? These people that have to answer for, answer for him don't her, have a in, legit answer. In her defense, there are no good answers for right. this question. There's not. Because you can't just come out and say, yeah, he's starting to lose it. I got a question for you, but I'll ask answer. I'll ask this after, you know. After this. your question? No, after this topic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, we're, we're there. At, we're at the end of the topic where I, this is the part where I ask you a question. Oh, okay. Well, okay. here we're here. So, do you think that Joe Biden should take a cognitive test? Of course. Okay. Of course. Democrat yeah. agrees that the president should take yes. a cognitive test. Okay. Right. Now, if I had my way, he would have never ran for president anyway because I think there should be a cutoff at 75. But I can't go back in time. So, yes, I also think he should take a cognitive test. Now, what's your question for me? So, you're a very smart individual. I know you pretty pretty well. He's so, not wrong. I am pretty smart. <laughs> so, <laughs> what is the best answer you can give that's um, not to bash him Mm-hmm. Kind of to defend him, but to also give the best answer available for why he said what he said about um, Jen. No, I'm sorry, Jackie. Hmm. Okay, so two things come to mind. The first one makes no sense, and it wouldn't fly. So that one would go. The first one would be kind of like what you said earlier, saying that well, he didn't know, mm-hmm. right? But she had died two months ago. Mm-hmm. He knew. There's no way that news doesn't get to him, Okay. Now, you can try to play it off because there's like 500 and something different Congress people. Right. Maybe, you know, one of them dies and it takes a, that information takes a while to get to the president, but no one's going to believe that one. Okay. So 
I think the one you have to go with, and it's not, again, it's not a great answer. Okay. And you have to preface it with past presidents. You have to use past presidents as an example. But you have to say, look, President Biden, just like President Trump before him and President Obama before him, all the presidents going back to as far as we've had teleprompters, Mm -hmm. they read off the teleprompter. Mm -hmm. This was part, uh, he was reading from the teleprompter. I like that answer. Shift the blame. Shift the blame to the teleprompter. Say, look, it. it, it was something that slipped through the cracks of the technical team. They still had Jackie on the, you know, the speech mm-hmm. came up on the teleprompter and he knew that Jackie was gone. So as soon as he saw it, that's why he went, where's Jackie? Cause it, for a split second, he's reading what we told him to read. It says Jackie's name. So he starts looking for her. And then that's when he realizes, Oh yeah, no shit. Like she's gone. And then, and then he moves on. You blame it. on. I mean, to me, that's the best way to go about it. It's not a great answer, but you got to blame it on the teleprompter. But at the same time, I don't know if he was reading from a teleprompter. I'm pretty sure he was. I mean, they all but it, do. It's good. They all read from a teleprompter. But man, if I'm on, if, if I'm Kamala Harris or somebody just in mm-hmm. his corner, I'm sitting there like, yeah, we're screwed. We're screwed. It's over. Because you know, bags. you can tell by the video that he's sitting there reading from a teleprompter. Mm-hmm. Because he's looking at one spot while he's talking. So you know he's reading from a teleprompter. And honestly, you can kind of see it when he gets to that point in the speech. He starts going, where's Jackie? Where's Jackie? Now, anybody in their right mind that doesn't have cognitive decline should be able to skip past that part. You should be able to be sitting there reading. You you say, Representative Jackie. And then you should be able to say, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today because of her tragic passing. She helped make this a reality. But then that goes back to but this he's, cognitive thing. Again, like yeah, that's what I'm compute. saying. He's uh, That's why I said it's not a great answer. <laughs> but it's the only one you got. He got confused. And he started looking for her. When it got to her name on the teleprompter, he got confused. That's tough, man. And then he even says in the, in the speech, he's like, Jackie, where's Jackie? Oh, yeah, I didn't think she'd be here today. No shit. <laughs> That's tough, man. Yeah. So, two questions for y'all. I only have one question, but he had a question too. So, get in the comments. Let us know. One, do you think Biden should take a cognitive test? And two, what do you think the press secretary should have given as a response to that question? How would how would you defend the president? If you had that, to. If, if you had to defend the president in that in that instance, you were asked that question. What would your answer be? Get in the comments below and let us know your thoughts. It's time for Minor Discomforts. Yeah.